throw onto his back uh, with full force until the match is over. So the match is in five minutes long, and uh, it can be over in two seconds if you throw him on his back. Secondly is uh, by grappling, submission. So you can choke him, you can arm lock him, or you can hold him uh, until he submits. When you hold him down, you hold him for 25 seconds. If you can hold him for 25 seconds, then it's, they call it pull him down, it's been so I, I basically uh, received a lot of my training in Japan. I, when I was, I grew up on the East Coast, and then I came out to San Jose State to go to the university. Uh, San Jose State is well known for a good judo program in the United States. Um, and, but ultimately, I ended up in Japan because I wanted to become an Olympian and I wanted to win world medals. And I had to go where the best people were training. And obviously, judo, its origin comes from Japan. Okay? It's, it's derived from jiu-jitsu, the Japanese jiu-jitsu. And um, nowadays, you see a lot of uh, marketing for the Brazilian jiu-jitsu, uh, which also kind of evolved from judo and Japanese jiu-jitsu. Uh, but the only difference between Brazilian jiu-jitsu and judo is basically the rules. Okay, most of the techniques are the same. The ground techniques, the chokes and arm locks. Uh, of course, there's no pinning in, in their uh, discipline, but there's pinning in ours. Uh, but judo, primarily what I'd like to share with you tonight is more the standing of the throws. Okay, the takedowns, the transition uh, from what sensei, we call sensei, is uh, talking about in the beginning. Okay, how do you get the person from standing to the ground? You don't just start, you can't just start on the ground, right? So as self-defense too, it's very important because a lot of times in self-defense situations, you're either grabbed or held or, you know, or punched, right? So you guys know about the punching, so now we go for the grabbing and holding. Okay? Does that all make sense? Yes, sir. Good. Um, uh, my personal background, I started when I was eight years old, so um, I think most of you are older than eight years old. But uh, I, again, started uh, with a Japanese sensei on the East Coast. I migrated to the West Coast, never went back because it was too sunny here. And uh, I made four Olympic teams in 1980, 1984, um, 1988, which I did the Bronx, then 1992. And then I was the coach for the 96 Olympics in, in Atlanta. So I'm all Olympic down. I, I don't watch it on TV <laughs> Um, no, now that's not true. I, I help athletes get to the Olympics now by our training center in San Jose. And if you're ever in San Jose, uh, please drop by San Jose State and practice that event. You can actually watch uh, a little lot of geo practice. So from now, what I'd like to do is just kind of warm us up a little bit more for five minutes, mainly with uh, falling. I know you guys do a lot of falling, but we're not going to do a whole bunch of it. We're just going to warm up a little bit. And then I'd like to teach you three basic throws, a couple different variations, and then the counter to those throws. If you're injured, if your back hurts, your knee hurts, just step to the side and watch. We're not going to be doing a lot of repetitive throwing. It's not going to be hard throw. It's going to be a simple one, two, three process. I just want you to understand the mechanics of the throws and how they work. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to do it if you're injured. You can just watch and learn. And I think it'll help you in teaching the throws in your classes. Sir, so let's, uh, let's do this. Let's just uh, let's all get in a row, in rows, and we're just gonna do a couple back fall. Okay, now we move side to side. You guys go side to side, right? Sir. Sure. Okay. okay, what I'd like to do is when I'm teaching a uh, beginner, like maybe some of you are teaching beginners, I like to tell them that they're in their favorite position, which is usually on the couch watching TV. <laughs> so if you just relax and leave your feet in that position, right? You don't cross your feet. That's number one. You don't cross your feet. Okay, right in this position, your one hand is holding the belt, the knot in your belt, and then the other hand is propping up the head, and you're going to take this hand and put it 45 degrees. Okay. That's a real important position to understand because when you're being thrown through the air over somebody's shoulder, you have to land like this. Otherwise, if you cross your feet, you're going to hurt your knees, right? Or, you're going to, or if you land with your feet first, you're going to hurt your, your ankles and your knees, okay? So you want to take the absorption of your whole body, right? So I'm just helping you uh, how to teach, okay? So what we're going to do here is 
We're going to lift our leg and our hand up and slap the mat. And then from here, we're going to go lift our hips up and go to the side. Let's all start facing this way. Sir. Sir. Okay, just get in position facing this way. I'll get the same position so I don't confuse you. All right. So you're gonna this time we're gonna lift up, rotate, and slap with your left. Good. Lift up, rotate, slap with your right. Good. Okay. Other side. Go. Good. Make sure you slap with your feet and your hand at the same time. Ready? Go. And go. Get your hips a little bit off the ground. Ready? Go. And go. Good. Okay, up. Sir, sir, sir. This is the way I teach the side ball right away. Okay, so once we're, we've got the student all the way up to there, what I'm going to do is I get him in a squatting position here. Right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put one, one, one arm out. Hold my job again this way. Okay. Right. I'm going to turn, face this direction, sit, right, and then slap. Don't do it that. Don't do that. Watch me do it once. One here. I'm going to squat. The, the, the more you squat and spread your legs, the easier the ball is. Okay. For, again, we're teaching you to get it. Right? So we're here, arm out. I'm going to turn, sit, and then you know, squat, sit, and then slap. Okay, so you're going to slap your right hand. Okay, your right foot is going to go out. First you're going to turn it on the face this way. And then you're going to stick your foot out and slap. Ready, go. Perfect. Stay up. First, that's where you're left. Okay, one more time. Ready? Go. Good. Okay, other side. Sir, Stay sir. Thick. Hold your belt with the right hand, left hand out. Right? Turn. Turn up. And I like to get them squatting like this because if you don't get them squatting, what happens is they go down and they go right in their elbow, right? So keep that hand up. Sometimes I'll even do this. Put my other hand underneath my elbow. And then when I go do this, I don't put my elbow down, right? It kind of forces me to hold. Sir. Okay, ready, go. Good. Up. Excellent. All right. And then uh, let's go, let's try uh, a regular roll. So back up a little bit. Sir. All right. Sure. All right. Okay, this is how we do our basic judo roll in judo class. Again, we're here, simple step, roll, and then these feet are coming up shoulder width. Sure. All right, so in, now, if you do this, if you cross your legs in judo, we say it's not good because when you get slammed, you cross your legs, it's going to hurt. But there's a lot of disciplines. The two cross legs. It's not that one's right and one's wrong. It's just I'm teaching you how we do it too. Okay? So we start here, step, right? Uh, I saw somebody teaching it today, right? They call it pizza or something. Pizza hand or something. Was that you? Yeah, it was, it was like a trial of pizza. Yeah, trial of pizza. I like that. So you're here, down, right? You can stay down, right? That's one way, but make sure you're like this. Not like this, not like this, right? Make sure you're in that sofa position, okay? Once you stay down, or you can come up, okay? First one, we'll just come all the way up. Okay, ready? Give me four, five, Sir. six, or one. Ready, go. Okay, okay go. Right, next. Okay, you guys can go. Right? It is, well, first of all, the referee, there's a referee and there's two judges. 
So we bow, then we step forward, and then you think, say, Hajime, because everything's in Japanese. Hajime, which means we get. So then it's all about getting the grip. This is my pulling hand, what they call in Japanese hikite. Hikite means pulling. Right? And this is my tsurite, which means my lapel hand. Pull, pull. Through, follow through. All judo is right here, it's in your wrist. Posture and in your wrist. Okay. So just to give you a basic understanding of oops, you tie it? Hey, so yeah. It's not tied to the I'm not gonna throw it right here. Um, so this is my grip, this is my grip. Okay. It's important how you grip. These three fingers are, are real important. If you grip with your whole hand like this, after one minute you're gonna be tired of the match. Because the, the person's not even gonna let you grip. Right? Once he grips here, right, hold as hard as you can grip. Right? Like hard, hard. Eyes up. Okay? So imagine he's doing this and I'm doing this the whole match. Right? I'm trying to take it off. After 30 seconds, his forearm's gonna be like a rock, right? Okay, so that's the kind of that's what you're going through. So I just want to give you kind of a feeling that you're not just kind of moving around like this, right? It's like a fight. It's a grip fight. Okay? So once you do have your, your grip, okay, it takes three things to throw the person. Okay, one is it takes all balancing where I'm pulling the person onto his toes, right? Two, it takes position, right? This is called Tao Toshi, right? Like just call it a forward throw, right? Off balancing, position, right? And then lastly, follow through, right? Follow through. Off balance, position, follow through. Those three things are in every single throw. There's 40 throws. But in actuality, I only use maybe five. Right. And I only really have one favorite. So in judo, like this is called okay. All right, this is called Seneca Bum. And relax. Right. I'm not going through. Go. 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 Okay, those are called Ichikomis, right? Which are called fins, basically fins. If you're gonna be getting golf, right, you're doing a lot of this. Good in tennis, you're doing a lot of this. Good in judo, you're doing a lot of these. Right? 500 a day, right? And at the Olympic level, 500,000 every single day. It takes about 45 minutes to do 500. Because okay, you can't do all 500 in one session. And we'll try it, we'll do some. And you'll see you'll do 10, and your heart rate will be way up here. Okay? So it's a lot of cardio, a lot of physical conditioning. All balancing position. That's what each um demonstrate, right? All balancing position. Follow. Okay. So that's one throw. Right. Another sample of a throw. <coughs> so we do on these. teach is a basic, the name of it is Goshi. So basically, it's a, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's a lecture. Or I'm sorry, society is what it is. So it looks like this. This is what I want you to pretend. Since we're not, we're kind of half judo, half self-defense, someone grabs you here. Right? Elbows bent because they're in your face, like this, right? Most people, they grab and they, they're trying to not hurt you, but intimidate you, right? So the closer they are, the, the better for you for them, right? The more they think they're scared. So from there, you can grab their belt, your knee, or you can just grab their 
Vice President. Either way. For now, we'll just grab the because we have to. Okay, so here's how the basic breakdown is. Off balancing, position is just you're going to pivot, right, and stick one foot out. Pretty simple. You can do it this way or the other way. Right? Off balancing is all going to come from here. It's like two fishing poles, right? City means like to catch, right? So snap. Snap, <coughs> pivot, and position. We don't want to kick the leg, we don't want to sweep the leg, we want to prop the leg. Right? You see my foot's turned in, right on this side, my foot's turned in. You're just going to place this right here. Right? Off balance, position, follow through, right? It's like you're driving a bus, you're just going to turn the bus. Right? And then you're facing this way. So I went from here, right, snap, here. So I'm facing this way, I'm going to end up facing this way. The way I teach that to beginners is you're on your knees, okay? White belts, because white belts don't know how to fall yet, right? This is what I do. They grab here, you grab here, off balance, position, follow. And then what I do is I look at their feet, right, on the instructor, and I say, and not only correct him, myself, or the person throwing, but I also correct the person landing, right? Now I can. So you do, you're killing two birds with one stone, okay? All right, so here, off balance, position, follow through, okay, set up. Since we're not, we're beyond the beginners, we'll, we'll practice it here. So you're here, again, step forward, right? Turn, pivot, turn, pivot. Now, I don't want to pull them into me. I want to keep going in that direction because it's off balance in this direction. That's a classic, um, you know what I'm going to do, right? So that's what you're going to break home now. So that's why I was saying, when you're the uke, right, you've got to work with them because you're trying to perfect this person, right? It's up to you to help him perfect. That's what uchikomis are all about. That's what practice is all about. If you take, it takes two partners, you have to help each other, right? Sorry. Obviously, Sorry. he knows from them too, so the counter to this thing, of course you're not going to let me get close to you. Not that that wouldn't work. Right? You can still do it, right? You can still off balance and control, right? But it's harder, it's a little bit harder, you know, especially if it's for your first time. So what I want to see is these elbows bent. I want to see this. I want to see that. Where you're kind of intimidated, right? You're looking at it like that. Because you're almost, when somebody does that to you, they're already on their toes. Right? So that's why this is so easy. And that's why you can just almost grab here. And, and they'll, they'll just kind of march so you're here, you're here. The most important thing is don't pull them down into you. And that's what you're pushing. Because if you push him, if you pull him down, all you're doing is you're making his balance more stable. Right? But if you pull him up, right, up into you, right, now you bring him up onto his toes, that's called position or off balance. Okay, that's what makes the throw work. All that other stuff is just kind of icing on the cake. Right? What really makes all these big throws is that first initial off balance. Okay, so you're here, one, snap. Now, in order to create this snap, I don't just use it, do it with my arms, right? If I'm really doing judo, you know, I'm moving around, right? I'm going to use my hips, my legs, everything. That's why we do a lot of. Um, Olympic lifts, like Olympic cleans, you know, clean and jerks, all day long, at home. That's what we do in judo. Because you want all the strength coming from your whole body. You put, uh, where do you put your foot when you're twisting your When you twist them, you just prop right here. Right? So you, you're, you're pulling off balance, you're pivoting, and you're propping, right? But what I was saying was don't turn and just do this. You have to kind of slide out of the way. 
right? You pull on this, but you got to put out on his foot. So this foot is going to slide a little bit. Slide and pivot. Okay? Slide and pivot. Okay. Now, the counter to this is easy. It's the same one. That's why I like these first three to teach things. Okay? So when he pivots, what you do is you're going to do it. Uh, that's right. Okay, so as soon as he does this, I, I check. Check means kind of like in Muay Thai, you know, when you lift your foot up. Well, we don't lift our foot up, but we kind of just plunge. Horse stance. Horse stance. Right. So horse stance and step forward a little bit. So you kind of check it. You have to anticipate this, right? You can't, once he has you like this, you're not going to stand. Okay, so he goes, go, block, right? And then, same on the other side. He sets himself up. Come in, block him, right? And then you're going to pivot, right? And you're going to drive the bus and turn left and prop that foot. Uh -huh. And it doesn't, you don't have to go bang and kick him. In fact, the more you do that, the harder you it is to throw. Right? Again, you're just you're blocking, right? The low stance, pivot, and just touch it. Right? To me, I'm a little bit late, and get thrown. That's the block. So, and there's no, you can't think about that, right? That all comes from, from experience, right? from doing it over and over and over, and from, from, from being thrown. In judo, the key to learning is being thrown. That's the problem with, with the people who come into learn judo, right? They've got this huge ego. It's the same problem with all martial arts, right? They don't want to be thrown. You know, they don't want to be shown up in front of their friends. Right? you got to kind of leave your ego at the door, right? Sure. You, you get thrown, you get thrown, that's how you're learning. And in judo, we say you, get, you learn by getting thrown. So, bottom line is, you, just, you have to keep doing it and do it until you get it. That's all. Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, it's, everybody's got that. Sure. Sure. Just check the leg that's coming. Tell them which foot you're going to come in with. Check that foot, and then you do it to them. Okay? Sure. Right. Okay. So, I, I didn't feel like I had any. That's, not, get... that's not abnormal. Oh, I see what you're saying. You couldn't do it. I couldn't. I felt like I was here. Right. To do anything. Right. So. Okay. Just walk through. That's okay. Easy. So, lock. Right. So I'm already feel like here. Right. So I. Yeah. That's not. That's not abnormal. <coughs> What's happening is she's pulling you forward. You're just as long as you can just stop it. As soon as you stop that in inertia or the movement, right? She's off balance. It's like taking your foot and hitting a wall. As soon as it hits the wall, it's coming back. Right. So that's what you're doing. Right? You're just coming in, bang, it hits the wall. So now she's off balance. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what he does first. He 
he slides with this as he's attacking. No, once I'm here, I don't want to move my foot. I just want to pivot. Because if I try to move it, I'm going to get thrown. It's little. That's a good question. It's a little bit. Yes, sir. When you have someone that's a lot taller and you're trying to do this, right. grabbing them and getting them on their toes. Yeah, it's, it's, it makes it, uh, it make it more difficult or more. It's actually a little bit easier when they're tall. You can bend their, their, their body a little bit, right? Like you can, like if I'm down here, I can pull him into me, right? Now he's already bent over. But against a real, real short person, it's sometimes it's hard to get him off balance. Right? So it's just a matter of pulling him pulling back. So, okay, so that's that's a, a basic sweep. You can just, just call it the sweep. Um, the next move is, your basic also a butter right? This this one here. Right? I see it being taught in a lot of different disciplines, right? Where your basic uh, whatever you call it. Step sweep. Like step sweep. Okay, step you call it step sweep. That's actually a good name for it because that's kind of what you're doing. Right here. I call it snap step. Right? <laughs> so think about it. A step sweep is is the last two parts of the remember the first three things I taught? Who can remember? There's three things that happen in every single drill. What's the first one? Off balancing. Off balancing. So a step sweep forgets about the snap step sweep. Right? So, I'll explain it. Snap step sweep, if I want to throw the person this way, I'm going to, I'm going to do this drill. Because when I do this drill, he's going to do that. He's, that's what he's going to do. Ten times out of ten. Right, just try it. Grab somebody go like this, turn them around, looking, they'll go like that. So, same principle, right? I'm gonna snap, right? Snap step. Right? Snap step. Right? That's what creates the thrill. Snap step, right? And then sweep. So I break this thrill down into this, like this. Snap, step. When you step and tell you look at your wristwatch. Now this all happens in two seconds, right? So turn your pinky up, because this means you're going to pull him up onto his balance onto this foot. Next thing you're going to punch the football, your toes pointed, right? Your hips going to extend past his, his hip. Because what happens is, if you kick a ball like this, it's going to go straight up in the air. If you punch the ball and you really kick it, you want it to go up that way. Your hip has to extend. Yeah. It has to extend. From here, forward, right, to go forward. It's the same thing, you want to throw them backward. Step, step, right, extend your hip, kind of past his, right, and then next, there, you're, there's a string tied to your head, to your toe. So when this comes down, your head has to come down too. Right? That's what creates the force. If you try to do this, right, that's what's going to happen. It's like that same thing, the counter. The harder I hit his leg, the more it's going to bounce off, the more I'm going to be off balance. Okay? So this doesn't do anything. It's just a guide. It's a sweep. The off balance position follows me. It's just a follow me, right? Snap, step. Snap me in this way. I'm pulling him forward and stepping him into it. Now he's reacting. I'm coming in, right? And then I'm sweeping. What I want you to do is just practice the first two. Yes, sir. You don't have to keep throwing a hundred times. You'll wake up tomorrow and need a lot of admin, right? <laughs> so, step, step, point your toe. Right? This is how they look.
fast as you can. Don't kick anybody. Ready? Go! <laughs> Chances are you're gonna get you're gonna get counted. No space, right? It's perfect. Come here, boom, snap, kick, is that a fun snap? Boom. Maybe put your hand there so they can touch your hand every time. So that's like a perfect teach you home. Do that over and over and over, and that's how you go. Okay. Counter to this throw, again is the throw, so we don't have to memorize too much here. Okay? So so uh, slow motion, we're here. You're going to come in for the, the hook my leg. Right? When you come in, this time I'm going to back check, right? So you try to hook, I'm going to step back, right? Before I step forward, now I'm going to just boom, kind of just balance, but I almost do it naturally anyway. Right? You step back, kind of spread your legs a little bit. Now, now you blocked his, his uh, he's trying to well, bounce, but you blocked his sweep, right? And then from here, you're just going to step back a little bit. You don't even have to step back. I would just pivot and then take it back. With the same move. So we're here, 
It comes in, boom, I step down. Right? Go back up, try to knock my leg. Actually, try to throw it. Okay, it's easier. Come. Okay. See that? I didn't even do anything. His, his power, right, when he hits, he throws himself. So that's what I was talking about. It happens in every throw. He comes in too hard, if you check him, he's going this way, automatically. Really, all you have to do is do this. Okay. So, slow motion, comes in, right, boom. I step back, get a good stance. First I block, right, then I throw. If you try to throw too soon, then you're going to get hit. Block, right, throw. You don't have to throw, just set them down. Okay, let's try it. Sir, half the class, move over. Yeah, me too. that you feel along the way. Really, truly, the way judo works is, is I'm, you know, your body, you know, if, you, if I become blindfolded, right, it's not about watching his leg coming in. If you, I could watch his leg all day long, I'm a world champion, and I, put it this way, I fought against the guy by the name of Koga, right, who all, I, everyone knew that this is the throw he was going to come in on, right? This, everybody, because that's what he threw everybody. And that's what I trained against. Right? But the first time I fought him, I still couldn't stop. Because it doesn't, you know, you might know exactly what he does, but if he does it so fast that, you know, you can't stop him. So that's where the Uchikol is coming in. But as he comes in, right, I can block this way, or I can move my body this way, whatever works, whatever stops his inertia. Right? The most important part is stopping his first throw, right? And then you can throw. Right? Don't try to do it all at one time. Okay, so it's time. So, um, we have about 10 minutes, so rather than go into another throw and give you too much confusing information, is there any questions about, uh, this, you know, we'll kind of wind down and wrap it up. Is there any questions about judo, about training, about the Olympics, uh, anything, anything at all? Yes? Sir. When you're fighting, did you <coughs> only the, can you only take people down with these throws? Can you do something else? Can yeah. You take, can you just take someone down and take there's there's 40 different throws, right? Oh, you don't have to do that. <coughs> Where he's so, for me, well, for me, I'm tired, right? Right. So you know, for me, uh, you know, my training is. <laughs> <laughs> but but for a competitor, I think it's an uh, yeah, I think it's an okay, I, see point. I think it's an advantage now because they can go and they can train with with you know there's so many grappling schools out there as well, right? So they can cross train. I think the grapplers can cross train with judo, judo, can, so it helps both. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And it's and it's there's so much knowledge out there about the grappling. Honestly, you know, when I was training in Japan, we used to do the groundwork for two hours straight in the morning, and then two hours of standing in the afternoon. So that was the and this is the 80s, right? So that was the last thing that I think would become popular. Is who wants to lay on the ground on the ground and choke each other around the last But you know, the UFC came along and thank, thanks to Voice, Gracie, and, and, uh, and Cuisine Jiu Jitsu, 